Hi, it's Brittany from The Emporium. Welcome back to my channel. Today is another video for 13 Days of Halloween. And we're going to make the super cute cocoon cardigan. It's a pattern from Patterns for Pirates. It has, um, so the adult version is the cocoon cardigan. And then the children's version is the butterfly cardigan. Um, I haven't, I have made both. I made a set for my daughter and I, but I think it's like six years ago. So this is the one I made. I used a bamboo French terry and then I used a cotton lycra for the bands. Um, there are a couple of options making it. Um, I did long sleeve with short cuffs. I did the short band and I did the tunic length instead of like cropped. I think cropped would have been like up here. Not my vibe. Um, I did the inseam pockets instead of the, um, I think they're called like patched pockets. And then I did not put the elbow patch on. I might eventually. I definitely want to make more. Um, I know normally on my channel I make bags. I use my industrial. Sometimes we use the domestic, but we're going to use the um, serger today. Maybe eventually we will use the cover stitch I have, but I hope you enjoy. Um, I am not a professional clothing maker. I struggle saying I'm a professional bag maker, um, but if I give any bad tips, I'm sorry. I'm just telling you um, what I know and what I've learned uh, while making clothes. So don't take it like as a strict tutorial, but just as like a let's sew it together thing. I hope you enjoy. We're going to go over cutting and sewing. All right, so I've got my materials here. I'm using this, um, I think it's a bamboo French terry, but my friend Lauren gifted me this fabric. I was so excited to make a cardigan with it. And then I'm using some black cotton lycra. I might have ordered it. I think it's called like the purple seamstress. I ordered it a while ago, so I, I just... I don't make clothes that much. But anyway, so this is going to be for my bands and my cuffs. And then this is going to be for the rest of it. And it's a little awkward right here because I have like vinyl sticking out where it doesn't stick out on the other side. But I needed to be on this side today so the machine can be plugged in and used right there. Okay. I've got my 8 by 24 inch ruler for cutting um, the bands because we're gonna need big measurements. And then I've got my pattern cut out and there are multiple options in this pattern and I'm gonna pick and choose. There is an elbow patch and I think it's cute, but I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna, I cut it out to save it to try it a different time. And then you have two pocket options. There's a patch pocket or the inseam pockets. I'm going to do the inseam pocket so I don't need the patch pocket piece. For your sleeves, you have, a, you can do short sleeves where you don't even use this pattern piece. Or there's a 3 4 inch hem sleeve. There's the long sleeve with a tall cuff. There's short cuff, long sleeve, and there's hemmed long sleeve. The first time I made this, I did the hemmed long sleeve, but I'm going to do a short cuff on the long sleeve. So this piece, I'm going to take and I'm going to fold it there. So if I want to use this pattern piece again, I can just unfold that. For your front piece... This pattern has like a cropped length and a tunic length. I'm going to do the tunic length. So if you wanted to do the cropped length, you would cut here. But I have the full tunic length. And then for the back, same thing. There is a cropped length line. And then um, this also gives you measurements for... If you were doing the patch pocket, you would need a band for the top of that, but I'm not doing that. And then it has short sleeve cuffs, um, 
long sleeve, short cuffs. It has all of your options. So I will need the short cuffs, long sleeve. I was actually going to circle these just so I don't forget. Um, I'm making the XXL size. I can't remember what size I made last time. And I was going to measure, but I couldn't find my tape measure. I think it was going to be fine. Um, okay, so I need short cuffs for a long sleeve. I'm not doing cropped. And then you have bands. So the band goes all the way around. It goes like around your neck and like around the way this one works. And there's three pieces for that. Um, so we're not doing cropped. Okay, we're doing tunic. So the options are a short band and a tall band. I'm going to do short band. So I need short band tunic front. There are two of those. I'm just going to circle two. And then I need the short band tunic back. And there's just one of those. So we have three parts to the band and two cuffs for our sleeves we'll need to cut. So those five pieces are all rectangles and I'm going to cut them out of the black. Um, I could cut my pocket out of the black too. I probably should. Okay. And then, so we've got the back. You cut one on the fold. I'm going to cut that on my print. The front, you cut two, but you mirror them. I'm going to cut that out of my print. And then the sleeves, you cut two on the fold. I'm going to cut those out of my print. So these are big pattern pieces. Um, even doing XXL though, they will fit on this Fisker's cutting mat I have. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and get the bands and pockets out of the way. I'm like, where can I sit these? The machine is sitting there. <laughs> All right. So we need this black. All right. And I need one measurement is 40 and a half. So I'm going to have to go off of this a little bit. Could fold it in half. Probably do that. All right. It's a lot of fabric. <laughs> All right. So for the 40 and a half, if I fold it in half, I need 20.25. And that is doable with my ruler and my cutting mat. I think that it'd be better to do it that way anyways. Let's see. That looks close enough. And is this the one I need two of? Yes. Uh, when you're working with cotton lycra, it likes to roll. I, I, I definitely prefer bag making, but I will say it is so nice to be like, oh, I need it. But like, that's fun when I have the bags and people are like, oh, I love your bag. I'm like, oh, thanks. I made it. But I don't know, with clothes, it's like, ooh. Thea had on, uh, Thea's my daughter. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, people might not watch every video. Um, so my daughter had on a little, like, holiday kitty dress when we did a cat show recently. And people were asking if I made it. And I was like, no, wish. But I think... Now that I have the serger up here, I might try to make some more clothes. All right. So I need to cut two of this one. I probably should have smoothed out up here more. And let's see. So this is, yes, this is going to be one. And we need another. Oh, I might have smoothed just enough. OK. 
Okay. And you want to make sure, like, I've got this big old ball of fabric here, right? You want to make sure nothing is under it. So, like, when I go to cut this, I'm not going to be cutting into the middle of my fabric. That has happened a couple times too many. We're wiggled. Okay. So there is two of our bands. Now we need to do one more, and that is the short band, which goes up at the top, I believe. And I'm just going to go here, and it doesn't have to be as long. I need to cut 23.25 if I do this in half. Wait, 13.25. <laughs> Math is fun. And you want to make sure if you're cutting it in half like I am, that it lines up the whole way. All right, let's see her. All right, I am like crooked at this point. So I'm going to just even this up a bit before I cut again. All right, there we go. Much better. So we've got our three bands. Now I need the cuffs for my sleeves. And these are smaller. I am going to come back down to where I was cutting at. Just so I don't go up too high into everything there. Um, also, if you give the fabric a tug, you want to just kind of let it set nice again. You don't want to be cutting it all stretched out. Or you'll end up with some funky measurements. All right, let me look at this again. Seems so tiny compared to the other measurements. Hey, Luna. I have a couple of windows open. It's a nice fall day here, but warm enough to air the house out some. And as soon as I went to record, the neighbors started mowing their lawn. <laughs> so I was like, oh, this is a perfect opportunity. I'll just clean up a little before I start. Oh, great. So done with this ruler. We don't have any more measurement cuts. But we need, for the pockets, you need to cut four. And they need to be two mirrored sets. So I am, you know what? I know it's just easier to work in this section. So I'm going to go back to it. I'm going to fold this over just enough for this pattern piece. Let's smooth it out. And then I don't know where my pattern weights are, but my phone works great for that. <laughs> so with it folded, you're getting your mirrored sets. I don't really know 
that this specific material has a right and a wrong side, like a front and a back. But if you have a material that does, this is a way to make sure that you get a front and a back. And cutting um, two at a time means you don't have to cut four individuals, which is really nice. There is one set. And you know what? We can just fold over this way. What is going on here? Somewhere. Maybe not. Maybe we'll stick to being up here. Apparently, I ordered a lot of this black, so. <laughs> um, also, when you're cutting, um, you have a grain line, and that's the way the fabric stretches. And this pocket piece does tell you the grain line. Uh, but if you wanted to rotate it a little, I don't think for a pocket piece it would matter. But when you're making clothes, you do want your pieces to go on the grain line because if it doesn't stretch right it might not fit right or wear correctly all right we are done with the black fabric Gonna need to fold that back up later. Okay. So, for this fabric, as I was just saying, you have a green line. So, yeah. This piece, oh, it does say, okay. So, the green line is gonna go up and down for all of these pieces. So on the fold is going to be my green line. And then for this piece, I'm just going to have to line it up on it. And then same with the sleeves. I'm going to cut the back first. Now my green line, when I cut this, it's going to lay down this way, sideways on my mat. So I need to fold it with the green line going this way. And the green line is, like you can see when you look at material, there are little lines in it. I would show you, but I don't think it'll truly pick up correctly. Okay. Um, I don't think I need to try to fussy cut on this at all. Truly, it is a real nice... Um, print size and pattern repeat. This fabric is really drapey. Oh good, that is folded enough. Like, move everything I can. All right. So that was folded enough, but now I need to get this laying nice and flat. This is so cute. I'm so excited. I'm gonna wear it like every day until Halloween. That I'm gonna wear it after Halloween. Um, this material is so like drapey. <laughs> it's hard to it's 
perfectly smooth out. Oh, I just remembered I'm going to the zoo tomorrow for Boo at the Zoo, and I am wearing this. Okay, so I'm going to lay this down, and I'm going to clip it at the fold. Right, that's gonna help hold that there. And then just gonna throw my phone right there. I think it should be fine. Um, I did flip the pattern piece over just because that's how I needed to do it because it's on the fold piece. It does not matter. Um, I think I got the green line straight. If you have a directional print, you're gonna wanna make sure you have it at the top. Um, guess I didn't really look. However, I truly don't believe this print is even directional. But then you're just gonna go ahead and carefully cut. I know some people when they make clothes, they like to pin and then um, cut with scissors. I just really like my rotary cutter. Some of the little corners are hard to get. You can just go back to them. You can grab your scissors if you need to. And because the fabric can shift, you just really want to try to take it out. Um, you might not be able to see me right here. Just going to go to the side. Okay, and then... Where did my scissors go? There they are. <laughs> I'm just gonna get this little corner there. Perfect. And then we are done with that piece because we only need one piece for the back. There's the back of my card again. <laughs> All right, we need to cut two mirrored pieces for the front. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide this up here. Oh, might not be able to get two. No, okay, we can do the sleeves. All right, so the sleeves, each piece is on the fold. So I'm just going to fold this over until I have enough for each sleeve. And I can clip again. Really trying to make sure it is smooth. If you end up with like a baggy like bunch area, you're gonna end up like, like on the back if it would have been like billowing out. You could have like a really baggy, awkward back of it. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm a bag maker. Uh, <laughs> doing, my, doing my best here.
sleeves are pretty easy to cut. Again, you would want to make sure that your print is the right direction. So there's a sleeve. The sleeves do look kind of short and it's because um, the, the, the seam comes down a little from uh, the other pieces. And when I look at the pattern piece, I'm like, my arm isn't that short. All right, we'll just go ahead and fold that completely in half there. No, we can do it. Ooh, just made it. All right. Uh, by making this pattern with all of the cuffs, you don't have to hem anything, which is really nice. I have a cover stitch, but I've never used it. Um, so I'm hoping maybe for Christmas in July. No, not July. 13 days of Christmas in December. Maybe I can conquer that one. Oh, who knows? It could be Christmas in July next year until I get to it. All right. We just need to do the front now. And this is another um, mirrored cut. So we're not cutting on the fold, but we are going to mirror. So I'm going to come down on my material from where I cut the back and I'm gonna fold it over and I'm gonna cut them both at once. And then that way, I don't have to cut both pieces individually. And that's gonna work for me because um, I don't need to like try to figure out my print and all that. Okay, so we can go in a little. And again, I'm just really making sure everything is smooth. There's no ripples. I mean, there are in other spots, but not where I am cutting. All right, and then I'm making sure that I have this rotated for my grain line and that I'm going to be cutting through each layer on both pieces. Sorry. All right. The material can get heavy and start to pull if it goes off the table. So I'm setting my hand here to hold that so it doesn't go anywhere. And I'm trying not to allow it to stretch parts that I haven't cut yet. All right, so I've got that cut to where I can move this material. Move the mat. <laughs> All right, almost done cutting. Well, this is way better. <laughs>
Never thought of that. All right. So we now have our two front pieces mirrored. We have our two sleeves that we cut on the fold. We have the back that we cut on the fold. Four pocket pieces, two mirrored sets. We have our two, no, that's not it. Two uh, cuffs for the sleeve. And then we have three pieces for the band that goes all around it. So that's everything you need to cut. I'm gonna get the serger set up and then we will sew. Ready to sew. All right, so I've got my serger. I have the Brother Lock 1034D. It's like the cheapest serger you can get. Does the job for me. I've got the pattern up on my iPad because I need it. It's pretty straightforward, but yes. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is work on our pockets. If you're making the other pocket version, you're gonna do that. I am not. <laughs> All right, so I've got the bands, the cuffs, here are our pockets, got my sleeves, kind of nice having a shelf behind me. This is the back, and then we have the fronts. So we need to take, we've got, okay, so we're gonna take it so, These curve in together. That's how they've got it. Oh, I guess we need to measure a little bit. All right. Measure from the bottom. All right, so we're just past Marie's foot. <laughs> You're going to take... Let's see here. There's a little difference on these. Is this the top? Yes. Okay. You're gonna lay them right sides together. Like I said, I don't think that my black has a right and a wrong. At least I'm not concerned about it. But we're just clipping this on here. Donna and Luna are playing in the cat tree. <laughs> All right, and then on the other side, gonna do the same thing. All right, we're just above Marie's whiskers. <laughs> All right, this one went to that one. So, is this how I had it? Yes. There is a top and a bottom to the pockets, but I did not mark it. Um, I had to rethread my serger because uh, I had brought it up here, and I think that it had gotten unthreaded by the cats, anyways. I had not had to rethread it in probably like two years or so. I had to look up a video. All right, so then you're gonna stitch those together. All right, every time I use this thing, I'm like, whew. It's like a different world. And I do believe you're just stitching it on the edge. Like you're not going into the seam allowance. Oh, knit fabric is wild. Am I on it? <laughs> yes. 
Yes. We're in business. All right. You could do parts of this on a regular sewing machine. Um, I am not. Come on. Starting is not my strong suit, apparently. Oh, because I'm like... That would be my neighbor's car. <laughs> Follow me for more sewing tips. Um, I did not catch that. I don't know why. So we're gonna we're gonna redo that. The nice thing too is this is for me. So <laughs> it's okay. Hmm. Maybe I can go in here. It's fine. It'll take care of it for me. I think I need to like come in at an angle more. <sighs> oh no. Okay. I see what it was. There's a little spring thing on this foot and it was underneath it. So it's been trying to push my materials away from each other instead of keeping the foot down. Okay. Yep. We're in business. So much better. Okay. So much thread right here. It's on there. It's fine. We're good. All right. So now we need to put these pocket pieces on the back and we're going to have to measure up on that. So here is the back. And you're going to want to make sure that it is going the right way. That I am going to double check. Yes. All right. So there's like a tiny little notch. It goes on the bottom. So there's that side. Get that clipped on. I enjoy the fact that I can use my clips that I use for bag making also making clothes. <laughs> I just, I don't like using pins. If I do not have to use pins, I'm not going to use them. It's very rare while bag making that I need to. And I always end up stabbing myself when when I need to use them. It's not a good experience. All right, now that those are clipped on, we can go ahead and sew them on. So much better with that little pin up there where it's supposed to be. I think when you make clothes, you're supposed to like take a needle and like feed your 
tails in backwards and that's kind of how you like knot off the ends. Um, one day I might actually try it. <laughs> Until then, like I said, I do not sell clothes. I just make them for my family. And if they fall apart on them, I'll be like, I made it just for you. <laughs> All right. So once you have those pockets together, we're going to do the shoulder seams. So we have our back. Um, I think when I make clothes, uh, these serger tails or get really long, like long threads. And um, I'm going to cut them in pieces before I throw them away, just in case the cats would end up getting those threads. You definitely want to make sure that it's going to be short enough that if they would eat them, like that's like a worst case thing, uh, but that it wouldn't be tangle in their intestines. Okay. Moving forward. So we've got our shoulder seams. We're going to line those up and clip them. So you have the little sleeve area, but these should match up. So we're putting the front pieces to the back. I do think it's mildly unfair that clothes are so much quicker to make than bags. <laughs> you do have to use a lot of fabric, but like no hardware. I guess you could have clothes that have like rivets and things like that. Grommets, still not the same. <laughs> I kind of want to make Thea a dress with this. We'll see. All right. And then we are going to sew both of those. And now I need to actually go with the seam allowance, which I feel like these markings on here tell me. So this is your, your seam allowance would go from like the needle over, right? Yeah. All right. So I need to be on that line. All right. Sure. <laughs> It is nice when you are making clothes and you're surging, it just cuts your excess seam allowance off. Like bag making doesn't do that. All right. I was really close to buying um, the can, no, the candy corn sewing string from wizardry just to make this and i had to stop myself i was like you don't need to but i'm gonna get um a full set of fairy floss and um unicorn mane ones for my serger because they're so pretty i have two of each right now but i think i just need it in every thread Just leaving them long 
the knot. So we're gonna go over these seams again. All right, next you would do the elbow patches, but I am not doing those. We're gonna get the sleeves put on now. So I'm gonna be silly. This is my cardigan right now. <laughs> All right. So the sleeves, when you open this up, you have the neck and then this is where the sleeve goes. You're gonna find the center. Okay. I'm gonna have to find the center and line that up. And then I'm going to do the ends. And it, they should fit pretty well. I'm just slightly tugging it to line it up, but neither side should be like stretched more than the other. Just making sure that they're even. Oh, there's all my clips. We'll need lots of clips when we do the band. All right, so there is one side. And then the other sleeve goes over here. So again, I'm going to find my center. And line that up. They should be right sides together. If not, you're gonna have one part inside out. Just clipping, clipping, clipping. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and sew these seams together. When you're sewing too, you want to make sure nothing is getting rippled under here. And that everything is staying together. The material can like really shift on you. So just go slow, adjust as you go. A 
other side. So we've got our sleeves on. Now we need to do the side seams. So there is our back. We're going to fold this over and then we're going to be matching everything up. So we're going to match the seam at the sleeve. The material is so drapey. So nice. And I'm gonna like butterfly my seam open. Or nest it. Not sure what they call it in clothes making. <laughs> And then I'm going to go to the end, match that up, I think I've seen some people make clothes and they like don't even clip it together, <laughs> they just go for it and that is because they've done it so many times and I have not. <laughs> I'm going to match up the bottom and then hope that my pockets match up. They might not. Okay. I just need to work it a tiny bit because I think that's the one that I did very first and the fabric shifted because of the presser foot issue. But that's okay, I can make it work. It's just a pocket. Well, I don't think I matched the pockets properly. All right, so I'm gonna have to edit my pocket a bit like the shape of it. Again, not concerned. Just didn't pay attention enough. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is trim. I did them, I did them wrong. So my pocket is gonna be a little bit smaller. But I'm doing it so it matches up. I'll just go out on the seam allowance for the pocket. That'll fix it, mostly. <laughs> it works when I make bags. Why wouldn't it work when I make clothes? All right, and then we're gonna stitch along this. And um, she says there's this corner here. You can take a sewing machine, like a regular sewing machine, and stitch that to make sure everything gets caught, and then go over with the serger, but I'm not going to set up the regular machine just for that. If I think I need to later, I can go back in and stitch that. Just 
just really make sure everything is lying flat everywhere as you go. Okay, so when I get in here to this pocket, this is where I struggle. Because now I kind of have to go out to the side. I think I did it all right. And then like I said, because I had to trim in my pocket, I'm just going to go kind of on the edge of it. I'm just trimming off the tiniest bit of it. Curves are not that easy. <laughs> I mean, it looks all right, though. Excited. All right, and then this is right there. Did it. I think I caught everything. Okay, so there's the like a teeny tiny hole there, but like I said, I can go in on the sewing machine and just tack that right there. I can do that later if I decide I need to. All right, we'll do the same thing on the other side. So matching up the bottom seam, the sleeves, and the pockets. Um, and I think I'm going to have to fix this pocket too. At least it would make sense if I have to. Come on. The material is like trying to stick to itself, but not. There we go. Uh, these ones might match up. Must have just flipped the other side. No. I don't know how I managed to do that. But again, just gonna make it work. Nothing wrong with that. All right, go up here to the seam for the sleeve and match that up. All right, and then the sleeve. All right, I'm gonna start from the bottom this time. 
just because that's what was right there. The only thing left after this is the bands. So exciting. So you now have, if you turn it right side out, <laughs> you've got a cardigan without bands. So, it's so cute. All right, we need to do the bands now. So we're gonna take those three pieces. If you have a right and a wrong side, you're gonna want to make sure you figure that out. And um, the order doesn't matter because it's just three and it's a loop. But you're gonna clip the short ends together And you want to make sure that you aren't twisting it. Okay, so that is flat. And then those go together. We're making one big loop with three seams, three pieces. All right, so making sure Everything is good, nothing is twisted. And then we're gonna sew those together. So one, find the next one. A lot of scraps there. I don't, don't know where the little like cup that catches the scraps is. All 
marine. So now you've got a big loop. You're gonna take that and you're gonna fold it in half and you're gonna want to make sure that the seam is on the inside. Oh, donut, donut. Maybe he'll come up here and say hi. Smelling my ruler. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do the seams first. And I'm making sure that the seam folds the same way, just so it doesn't feel like twisted inside. All right, and now we need to fold and clip everything. We can kind of just clip here and there. Break a clip or two. Uh, the clips that we're clipping on right now will basically just get transferred to the next step. whole neighborhood is mowing their lawns today. <laughs> I'm recording this on a Saturday, so nice weather Saturday. Can't blame them, but still. All right, one more section to clip. And you're really just making sure it lines up everywhere that it isn't like shorter on one side than the other because you're going to want to catch it all for the next step. All right. So you need the center back of the cardigan. So we've got right here the center back. I'm gonna put a clip right there. Okay. We want the center seam of the neck band and that is connecting the two longer front pieces. So let's see here. Not that one, it would be this. So we have the two long pieces and then right here is the shorter piece. So this is gonna go to this. If you have a directional band instead of a solid color one like I have, you're gonna wanna be mindful of how you are placing this but you're gonna put them right sides together. And then we're gonna match the other seams to these lower seams. So I'm gonna make sure it's not twisted. 
and I get to that seam in the band and I'm going to clip all of that together. The thing is you can like lay this out kind of. Let's see here. The sleeves can be in. So you've got, oh boy. A lot going on. Okay, we have this like this. Oh, you can see most of it. All right, so I need to untwist this because now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to line the last seam of the band up with this side seam. All right, from there, you can place it gently and start clipping it. You shouldn't have to stretch anything. It should fit real nice. Okay, so there is one part all nice. I'm gonna kind of rotate this and make sure that this isn't twisted. Yay, we did it. And I'm gonna work on clipping this side. Again, you shouldn't have to stretch. Put more clips in if you want to. Dang it. I'm squeezing the crap out of the clips and then that's when they break. <laughs> you don't need to squeeze the crap out of them. I hope you can't hear my son's phone. I forgot to close my door. He was playing video games with a headset and now he's walking around with loud videos. <laughs> Okay, so it looks like I might need to adjust a tiny bit. Maybe not. I think it's setting nicely. If you have to stretch anything, you can stretch the band. And you can just kind of work the main cardigan fabric around. All right, one more side to clip. Again, make sure you're not twisted. I think if you just figure out which side is better for you to clip from. That helps. If I lay the band down, I can kind of like gently put my exterior fabric onto it. And then that's kind of like helping with placement.
And I think working from like each side back and forth a little helps me too. The exciting thing is after we attach this, we only have to finish the um, sleeves, armholes. <laughs> ah, one more clip, perfect. Okay, I'm gonna make sure before I sew that everything sets right and is not twisted. And it does, okay. Uh, so it says you want to ease the neck band differently along different curves. So that's kind of what I moved it a tiny bit. All right, so now we're going to stitch around that. Um, it says after you stitch it, to press it. You probably won't yet. And optionally, you can top stitch the seam. All right. Here goes nothing. So I'm going to go in at an angle. As I said before, you just really want to make sure that you're not stitching through things you shouldn't be. Make sure you're catching everything looks like I am. That's good. Oh, looks like I missed a clip right there. I'm going to clip that together real quick and adjust right there. Looking good. I'm gonna try to put these clips in here. <laughs> I know myself. It's just easier to do it this way. And I'm not. My pedal's trying to walk away from me. Standing and sewing is like a, a different world, I think. And I've gotten so comfortable with my industrials. The pedals can't run away from me. They're attached to the frame. <laughs> Looks like I am up at the top of the neck band.
We're getting there. <laughs> One big loop. Almost done, just two more clips. So this is where I know that I should take this and feed it through to finish that seam there. All right, almost done. This is so cute. All right, so technically I should press this seam and I can do that. Um, another thing is you can take this pocket, and I did have to trim mine a little bit, but you can tack it right here to this seam so that it's not just flapping in there. So something to be mindful if you want to do. All right, now we're gonna do the bands on the sleeves. All right. You're gonna take and fold in. But I saw this trick before where you fold again. Let me make sure this is gonna be right. Yes, okay. So you fold the band in how you would be folding it. And then you would be just stitching here. But then when you fold it in on itself, that gives you like two rows of seam. But if you fold it again, you end up with one seam. Make sure this holds out right. Yes. Okay. Do that again. Which side? This side. Okay. They're just like barely different, but if I'm going to do one, I better stick with it. All right. So fold that in. Fold it again. And stitch. Okay, so you end up with this one seam that holds it all together. It is pretty slick. All right, and then you're going to want to match this all up. And it's nice too because it keeps that side together automatically. And then what we're going to do is you can take, they're both the same side, but I'm going to put this inside of here and clip the seams together. And then you need the halfway point. Probably should have found that over here before I went there. Put a clip. And then I'll match those up. And then with the cuff, they're not the same size, so you're going to have to stretch a little bit. Ah, trying to separate the material. Okay, so you're just going to give it a little bit of a stretch to line it up evenly. 
And you really only need like four clips here. But line that all up. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other one. All right, let me find my halfway point first. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So again, this goes in here. If you have a right side, you want to be mindful of the direction, but I do not. Line up that seam. And then find the halfway mark. And line up again. A little stretch on both sides. All right, and now we're just going to stitch those together. It isn't the easiest thing, I don't think, to stitch um, these little cuffs. But then I think about the people who make like baby clothes and I'm like, nope, couldn't do it. Couldn't be me. All right. And I'm just kind of going right on the edge. Just enough that it, it trims a little bit. And just adjusting as I go. That's another seam that I should go in on. There's that. Almost done. I'm really excited. I love when like these little 13 days or whatever series give me an excuse to make something. Like this for myself. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Okay, let's see her. Get that all lined up. an hour to sew. It's fine. I think I could do it a lot faster if I had made something clothing related in the last um, 10 months. I haven't since December. So, and you guys got to see that. So there is my super cute cocoon cardigan. Thanks for hanging out with me while I sewed. I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to have to find some more clothing. Um, I was playing with the idea of doing a different cardigan and making um, matching for myself and Thea. And then I could do the kids version for like Christmas. 13 days of Christmas, I think. If you haven't subscribed already, I would love if you did. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.